Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the feature race at Louisiana Downs, not only on Sunday, but for the entire Louisiana Downs meet is race number 11. It's the grade three super derby for three-year-olds. It's a big field. It's a race you can bet with a DRF Bets account. Sign up, get 10 times the bonus. Bet 20, get 200. Learn more at drf.com forward slash bet. Here's the field for the super derby. We've got nine, seven of five on the morning line favorite. That's Lone Sailor. Now I know Lone Sailor is only one for 12 in his career, but let's take that lifetime record with a grain of salt. I mean, he ran in the Preakness, he ran in the Kentucky Derby, he ran in the Haskell against Good Magic and Bravazzo, who just ran third in the Travers with a 97 buyer. You take those grade one races off the page, he's been right there in some solid, solid races. Yeah, he certainly has. I, you, you, can't, you can't knock who he's faced. He's faced the best of his generation. At the same time, there is a part of me that looks at it and says he's still one for 12, and the number of times that he has rolled up, and I think we always go back to it when we speak of Lone Sailor, that Louisiana Derby, what was the excuse there? Because he put a length on the field at, at one point, about the eighth pole, and somehow he ended up losing the race by a neck. So uh, he's just the kind of horse to me, until he proves that he can go over the hump and get the job done, I'm not totally convinced that he's just some slam dunk in a race like this. I think that's a good point. And while he deserves perhaps to be favored, he's 7-5 to five on the morning line. Heck, he was favored in the Ohio Derby. He was 5-1 to one against the two-year-old champion Good Magic and subsequent Travers favored Good Magic in the Haskell. He's a horse where you watch that Louisiana Derby and you watch that Ohio Derby, and he has the momentum in both of those races, and somehow he loses. Now, it could be that a mile and an eighth is a little bit too far. He's going to appreciate the cutback to a mile and a sixteenth here, or he has a little bit of hang in him, and that's something to consider at a short price. He should get some pace. We know that Lone Sailor likes to rally from the back of the pack. Timeform US has a red bar on its pace projector. That means that they believe this pace will be fast, and you would think that would benefit closers coming from off the pace like Lone Sailor. Uh, I wouldn't take a short price on this horse, but I would not be surprised if he wins. Speaking of the horse on the lead in the pace projector, that's the horse that got ran off his feet last time out. In the Ellis Park Derby, going a one and a half turn mile, those time form US pace, projector, uh, pace fractions were very fast and he never got close. No, yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what we get from this horse. I mean, he's done some decent things throughout his career, but like you say, that most recent race just absolutely got nowhere near the front end. I don't know. There's a scenario where he can improve here and get back to some of those better races, two, three, and four starts back. But right now, I don't know. He's just the kind of horse that I'm not, not enamored with. He gave Mr. Freeze a little bit of a fight three starts back, and Mr. Freeze won the West Virginia Derby by a country mile back on August the 4th. He beat a couple of these horses, including High North, the number eight. Now, it was a weird Mountaineer Park racetrack that day. We're used to the rail being dead on prior West Virginia Derby days. We were preparing for it pretty much all summer. And heck, speed did very, very well. High North was up close to the pace, and Mr. Freeze just ran away from him. He did. Um, I, it's not so much that, that's not the reason that I don't like this horse. I don't like this horse because he didn't even hang on for second in a spot like this. And he was out there prompting the pace throughout. And it was it was an absolute conveyor belt at, at Mountaineer that night on the main track. So the fact that he faded a little bit late, now perhaps a mile and an eighth isn't ideal for him. Maybe a little bit of a turn back here is going to help. Uh, I just thought that was such a disappointing effort considering the racetrack. He had everything in his favor. And Mr. Freeze, sure, he looks like he could be very, very talented for Dale Romans. He hasn't done anything really wrong in his career. I still think you're not supposed to fade as badly as High North did that day. I'm willing to give him the benefit of the mile and an eighth excuse. I think turning back to a mile and a sixteenth is what he wants. I think he'll be more tactically placed. I don't think he's going to be forced to go after the leader early. But again, I wonder how much improvement is left. His best buyer is a 91 after 10 lifetime starts. But he does go out for Brad Cox and Florent Giroux. These are high percentage connections. The number one Autumn Warrior beat three of these common foes in the local prep for the Super Derby. That being the pre Prelude on August the 4th. This horse is undefeated. He's a son of Orb, so a mile and a 16th we know is no problem. And he's shown a versatile running style. He also goes out for a very good trainer in Al Stahl and should be a price. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I suppose that the way that you can approach a horse like this, you have uh, high connections, high profile connections with Al Stahl. You have a, a what seemingly is a decent pedigree for a circumstance like this. Uh, I, this is going to be a very general statement about the prelude. 
if any of them win, I lose. It's just an instance where you could throw a blanket over all of them. None of them have run particularly fast in their career. And I think they're facing a few decent horses in here. Uh, I, the prelude, I'm throwing it out entirely. So that means the four McFeely, the five Bodies Maker, the six G's Turn will kind of give him a little bit of short shrift. G's Turn had won a couple of races on dirt. I think his dirt form is pretty good, but... He's had 15 starts, and he's yet to buy her 80. Uh, Bodie's Maker is a one-run closer, and I guess if you wanted a one-run closer in this race, you'd want Lone Sailor. And as for McFeely, who's a half-length and a nose away from being undefeated on four lifetime dirt starts, he might have a little bit of upside. Maybe I would want to use him underneath, but I agree with you. I don't like the prelude as a whole. Yeah, I mean, McFeely is the one that I would be most interested in simply because of what you alluded to, the fact that he's still lightly raced. He's only gone out five times, and perhaps you're going to get a forward move. My problem is the forward move from the mid-70s, what does that get him to? Does that get him to a, a low to mid-80? And even at that point, that's not fast enough to win. What did you make of the number two Charlie's Schiller's most recent race? It came over the Louisiana down surface, but it came in an off-the-turf race where he was able to get to the lead and control it on a very easy and uncontested lead. Here's an 88 buyer speed figure, and that race would put him close to the top contenders in this field. His prior eight races, though, his best buyer was a 59. Whenever you get a race like that, I, I think you need to tread lightly because just at face value, you're going to look at this and say the 88 makes him a legitimate threat in here. He has some early speed. That's probably going to work against him in a race like this. I look at him and say, you got to prove to me that that was legitimate because I feel like the sample size that I had for the prior eight starts that's more representative of what you actually are, a horse that can't crack 60 on the buyer scale, not the horse that's approaching a 90 going into the toughest race of his career. To me, I want no part. Let's take a look at our top selection for the Super Derby. One of your favorites is in here, the number nine, Lionite. This is a horse who you highlighted on Out of the Gate several times, his trouble trip in the Iowa Derby against High North two starts back. You could have actually made the argument that he ran just as well, if not better than High North, who had a nice clear trip that day. And last time out in the West Virginia Derby, I thought he could have been closer. He broke really well from the inside post, and the jock just took him in hand, and the next thing you know, he's near the back of the pack, and after that, over that racetrack, you mentioned it, conveyor belt, he couldn't make up any ground. No, and, and to be fair to him, he was actually making up a little bit of ground toward the end. He was the only one that was doing any running at the end of the race, with the exception of Mr. Freeze, who we made mention, was out there winging it on the front end. He has a little bit more tactical speed than I think we saw in that race, as you may have mentioned. I guess the concern now becomes, I don't all of a sudden want him to be more forwardly placed, you know, up there pressing the, the early pace setters. I want him sort of mid-pack and make that run. If you get a more fairly playing main track that day, especially on Sunday afternoon, with some pace in front of him, you're going to get the jump on Lone Sailor. I'm not in love with High North. I made it clear about the prelude how I feel about that. I just feel like Lionite at odds of 9-2, to two, this is the opportunity to take advantage. I think he's better than what it looks like on paper. He's done some decent things in his career. He's in great connections, great hands. I think this is the opportunity to take a shot with him at what should be a very, very square price. To me, he's the only horse I want in this race. I agree with you. The way I would ride him is I would just follow High North. High North is going to try to take up a tracking or stalking position, three paths off the rail, in the clear, no dirt in his face, no traffic issues. I think the jock on Lionite should be following High North. When Flo drops his hands and asks High North, let's confront him. Let's get on top of him and let's see who the better horse is in a stretch drive. I know we'll have the better price. We're nine to two on the morning line. Give me numbers. 9387. 9283 for me in the grade three Super Derby. The feature race at Louisiana Downs on Sunday. It's a race you can bet with a DRF bets account and 10 times the sign up bonus. Head on over to drf.com forward slash bet for all of the details. Approximate post time for the Super Derby 505 Central. Good luck.